Okay, so we're going to do an example of the tether ball problem. There's many variations of it. This is one of the slightly more challenging versions. So let's go ahead and first take note, of course, of a couple of things. Now, I'm going to speed through this video. So if you want to try it for yourself, I would strongly suggest you pause the video um, because there's no point in me trying to hide the answer. I'm trying to walk you through all of it. So if you want to help yourself, don't just blindly follow me. Go ahead and stop and then try to solve it for yourself. You can do that. You know how to do that. So right now I'm writing the three important points, which are, of course, we've accounted for our givens. So our givens is what we were given here. And we have our mass is 0.45 kilograms. And our velocity is 4 meters per second. And our length is 1.8 meters. And our two unknowns are theta and our tension. Okay. So we've laid everything out. We always got to do this kind of stuff because we need to know what we're working with. Okay. Not only that, but in some of our more advanced problems, we might actually have things that we can derive from that. And that's exactly what's going to happen in this one, as you will notice later on. Now our tetherball here, we have to go ahead and at least diagram what's going on here. So our theta. Now one of the things I notice with many beginning students is they don't get the whole geometry thing where your theta can be theta somewhere else exactly in exactly the same way. So I drew the theta both sides here. And here we have our length. And here we have our radius. Okay. And let's go ahead now and move on to the actual force diagram. Now if you think about it, there's really only two forces. There's the force of tension that is pulling back to the rope, and there is the force of gravity. Okay, so let's go ahead and write these down. And once we have our primary forces, we can go ahead and break them into their components. Now gravity doesn't really have any components. Tension does. The vertical component of tension, which if you think about it, is going to be the cosine of theta, based on the theta from right over here. And our horizontal is going to be t times the sine of theta. Okay, and that's going to equal the acceleration centripetal. That's going to equal the weight. And we have our two forces now. We have our y forces, which are going to be ma, and our x forces, which are going to be ac. Now, ma is actually going to equal zero because we don't have any vertical acceleration. So let's go ahead and set up our y first, which is going to be our t cos theta, if you see over there, minus mg should equal zero, so that we have no movement up or down. That's going to say that t cos theta equals mg. This is pretty basic. Now let's go ahead and go to x. So notice I'm being very organized as I'm laying everything out. There is absolutely no instinct going on here, no math. It's just laying everything out just like a dummy. You know, I'm a math dummy, so I should know. So we've got our t sine theta, and our uh, acceleration, of course, is mv squared over r. Okay. So, like I said, no, no brain work here yet. Now we set up our tensions, and we're just going to set both equations equal to t. So it should be obvious what we're about to do here. We're about to, to plug both in, one in one side and the other on the other side. So that mv squared over r sine theta. Okay, so let's go ahead and equate them. That's going to be g over cos theta, and you should know m is equal on both sides, so I'm just ignoring it. r, and that's sine of theta. Let's check, check. We know the values of that and that, but wait, what's r? Well, if we look up here, our r value is actually going to be, we can derive it from the actual triangle, from our trigonomics, uh, trigon trigonometry. <laughs> okay, so... Remember, we have theta here, and we have r and l, okay? And if we have that, remember that our sine of theta is opposite over a hypotenuse. And in this case, that's going to mean that it's going to be r over l. And so if we're looking for r, that means it's going to be equal to l times the sine of theta. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that back in. Well, that's g over cos theta. Everything's the same, v squared. But now we have L times the sine squared of theta because we have two sines of theta. Pay attention to that. 
don't get lost okay so now let's go over here and so now let's go ahead and just shuffle these around we're going to get a sine squared theta and that's going to give us a v squared over g times l and that's multiplied times cosine of theta well so how do we solve this we've got you know we've got our sine squared theta and our cosine theta uh, that just looks crazy and here's the thing is, once you're at this stage, you're probably going to be stuck. So what I recommend is just throw whatever you can and see what works. One of the first things you might remember is the trig identities might give you a clue. Now, I'm not expecting you to know this. I'm just saying throw whatever you can and see if something sticks. In this case, we're going to try the most basic of the identities, which is the sine squared plus cosine squared theta. And if you notice this, by converting to only cosine and cosine squared, we can actually solve it like a quadratic equation. So that's going to be cool. Now, if you've never done it, I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so first we substitute in our sine squared to become 1 minus cosine squared theta. And now we're just going to replace these v squared over g times l into their numerical values. That's going to be v squared is 16, and that's going to be 9.8, and that's going to be 1.8 times cosine of theta. So notice we have nothing but cosines. Okay, so that's going to give us z0 equals cosine squared theta, and that's plus, and that's going to be 0 0.907029 cosine theta minus 1. Okay, so solving quadratic equations, well, you learned that like in what, like the third or fourth grade? And that's going to be minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And so our b is, that's the 0 0.907029, that's minus. Then we have plus or minus the square root of that same value squared. And that's minus 4 times 1 and negative 1. And all of that is over 2 times 1. And that's going to give us two values. Okay, so we've got the value 644518, 0 0.644518. We've got negative 1.55155. And these are going to equal cosine of theta, not theta. you got to think about it. I'm just speeding by, so you got to stop and think about why it equals cosine theta and not theta alone. Now, the other thing is the negative 1.55155. Think about why that cannot be one of our values. Okay, so to figure it out, we have to get the inverse of the cosine. And if we plug that in, the inverse of our cosine is going to give us 0 0.870404. Now, since my calculator is in radians, I've got to multiply by 180 over pi to get to degrees. That's going to give us our theta. So we have solved our first part, which is the angle theta. Now the second part, and that's going to be just super easy. So to solve for tension, we could have used either of the two equations. You notice we had mg over cos theta or mv squared over r sine theta. I'm just using the first one, 45, 0.45, 9.8, and the cosine of 49.9 is going to give us 6.85 newtons. So, I did zoom through this, but I'm hoping that that gives you some idea of how you lay out the problem. And if you're laid out and you're just very organized, you know, I'm really bad at this stuff. And yet, once I get organized, look at that. Okay, so I hope this helps. If you got any questions, let me know. Thanks, and take care.